Welcome in Chipola Nation. I'm Donnie Tyndall, head men's basketball coach here at Chipola College. Got a special guest with us here today, JT Warren. JT is a sophomore forward who was a big part of our championship team and Final Four team a year ago and, and has been a big, big part of our success thus far this season. JT, welcome to the show. What's up, Coach? A lot of viewers out there now, man. Yes, Don't sir. get nervous on me, all right? Yes, sir. Tell me a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, where you went to high school, et cetera. Um, I'm from Tilton, Georgia. I went to high school at Tilton County High School, and I played for uh, Chris Wade and Tommy Blackshear. And tell me a little bit about your high school team. Did you have a good team, especially your senior season? Uh, yes, sir. We uh, went to the Elite Eight my senior year. My uh, sophomore year, we went to the Final Four and played – for a Final Four and a championship over in uh, McEachern. Nice, nice. Well, he's got a, a lot of experience, and I always say this. When we recruit players, so many times we look at, has a young man been coached? Has he been successful in his high school program? Because usually that translates at least a little bit into the college level, and JT played for a couple fantastic coaches, won a lot of games, and he's doing the same thing here at Chipola. Now, let me ask you this, JT, when, when you're being recruited, yes, sir. wined and dined and all the things that come with it, right, what was the biggest thing or maybe a couple of things that made you pick Chipola? I mean, when I came here on my visit, you know what I'm saying, it's just a place like I felt at home and everybody, you know what I'm saying, came together and just played hard together on my visit. Well, I remember on your visit, you played really well, yes, sir. and uh, we joked a little bit after the workout that, heck, I wanted you to skip your senior year and come <laughs> play for me right then. Yes, sir. I knew you were going to be a really good player, and, you know, when I talk to our players currently, they all mention a lot of the same things, and one thing that's commonly referred to or talked about is how hard our kids play. And I think that, that goes both ways. Sometimes a recruit can come in and maybe not play well, get intimidated by how hard our kids play, and not want to come to Chipola. But I think it's a sign and a testament to you and who you are that you like that competitiveness, and that's exactly what you bring to the table or have brought to the table in your two years here. Now, I know you're very close with your family especially your auntie and your grandmother, right? Yes, sir. Tell our fans a little bit about them and maybe the impact that they've had on you, bringing you up through middle school and high school and getting you off to college, JT. Uh, well, those, those two, they really play a big part of my life. Like, they handle all my, my uh, basketball finances, and they really helped me get through high school, you know what I'm saying, push me through high school to graduate and get my education. Yeah, and it's so important to have that support system around you because I don't care how good you are, or how many games you win, you're going to go through rough times in this game, right? Yes, it's, there's a lot of ups and downs and a, a lot of getting through injuries and getting through tough losses and fighting for starting positions, all those things that come with it. And you have to have a support system. And I think there's a really, really cool story about JT. One of my former players, Brandon Shingles, was my assistant for a couple years here. He's at McNeese State now. And he recruited JT here to Chipola. And it was probably our fourth or fifth game of the season, his freshman year, last season. Wasn't playing a lot at the time. Spare minutes, if you will. Was finding his way still as a young freshman. But we talked religiously as a team about if you make excuses, you point fingers, or you can't take ownership and your shortcomings, you're really going to have a hard time making it here. And a neat story, JT, after a game, Coach Shingles was out talking to his auntie and grandmother, pleasant conversation, but you could tell they kind of felt like JT should be playing a little bit more, like, like most parents feel. My mom felt the same way, I'm sure. But the thing that really got my attention was four or five games into his freshman year, J.T. Warren said to his auntie and grandmother, look, this isn't high school anymore. At this level, you get what you earn. And I told Coach Shingles that night, I said, this kid is going to be a player, and he's going to be a really good player because if you're, if you're that mature as an 18-year-old kid five games into your college basketball career to be able to tell your loved ones, look, I'm going to get what I earn, you know you got a special guy, and he's proven to be just that. Let me ask you this, JT, what's, um, what's your favorite basketball memory so far here at Chipola? Uh, it's nothing like, you know what I'm saying, winning the championship and cutting down those nets. That was my first championship, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I played in the Final Four game, Elite Eight game, but winning the championship felt really good. 
talking about the region slash state championship, yes, right? Yes, you know, and so much work goes into that. And, and you're right, when you're up there on that ladder cutting down nets and you're hugging your teammates and taking pictures and all the things that come with a championship celebration, there's nothing like it. Yes, and uh, hopefully we can do that again, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> Sounds good. Let, let me ask you this, outside of basketball, Outside of the game and the contest and the competition, what's been the biggest life lesson you've learned from Coach Tyndall or his staff or maybe a teammate so far in your time here at Chipola? I mean, going being here at Chipola, like, we really teach and harp on, like, having fun, you know what I'm saying, enjoying life, you know what I'm saying, and getting your education. That's really, like, been my biggest lesson, like, I learned. Because in high school I had some struggles, but once I got to college I realized, like, I only got four years at it, so I really need to take a chance and then really get my education. Yeah, and, and you've done that. Yes, JT's a very good student. He's on track to graduate here in May. He'll go on to a Division I school. And then after basketball, he says he wants to coach. Now, he sees how hard my assistants work and how demanding the job is. Would you ever want to come back and be an assistant? Chances are I may work for you one day. I understand how this business yes, works. Sir. But would you ever want to come back to Chipotle and be an assistant coach, JT? Yes, sir. I mean, it's a great place and a lot of good people to be around. So, yeah, I would like to come back. And, and what, what strength do you think you'd bring to the table as an assistant coach? I mean, just getting people that, you know what I'm saying, bought together and playing hard and letting them know, like, this is really a business. Yeah, it, it really is, and, and I'm glad you've learned that. Maybe you got a question or two for me. You got anything you'd like to ask, JT? Uh, compared this year's team compared to your last year's team, two-year team, how, how would you say, like, what's the comparison? Well, our first team was a little bit different because of COVID. The year was so spaced out, and two things really kind of took place over that team to separate us. I thought Duke McLeod, the big 7'3 kid, grew a little bit and gave us an elite rim protector. And then our point guard, Jaden Zachary, we got 10 or 12 pounds off of him. He ended up being an All-American. So I thought that whole team continued to improve. But we had two pretty special players, two guys that both ended up in the ACC and carried us a, a great deal that year. The second year's team, I thought the biggest key was we returned nine players, mm -hmm. nine good players from a Final Four team. So we were experienced. We, were, we had a lot of minutes logged, if you will. And that led to our lot of success, especially the good start that we got off to. And then when we went back to Kansas, there was no nervousness because we'd already been there the year before. We played. We kind of had the nervous Nelly, I call it, out of us. Now, this year's team, compared to those two teams, I think this year's team is deeper. I think this year's team, we've been number one in the country the last two years in defense. We're currently number one, but I think this is our best defensive team that we've had. But we only returned four players. You were one of them, right? Yes, sir. And now some of these new guys have shown at times to get the nervous Nellies and not be as confident as, as the years past teams have. So I think that's the biggest thing. This team, in my opinion, has a chance, an upside, a ceiling, if you will, to be better than those two teams. Um, but that experience we had the two years prior was pretty important. But these young guys are coming along. How do you compare this year's team to last year's team that you played on? Uh, I mean, this year's team, like you said, you had nine returners, so everybody was experienced, and you know what I'm saying? The guys really pushed each other. But this year's team, like, it's a lot of new young guys, and us four returners, we really trying to get, you know what I'm saying, the young guys that locked in and bought in, which yeah. they have been so far. Yeah, and JT's done a great job of trying to be a vocal leader, leading in the locker room. Our guys look up to him, respect him at his end of the floor in pre-practice workouts. He's taking guys to the side and coaching them. So that four guys we've got back, but this is one guy that's probably made it seem like seven or eight returning because he does such a great job helping those young guys. Last question for you. Uh, I know you really like basketball, Coach. Okay, you want to so, ask me another question. Yes, okay, go ahead. I know you really love basketball. So is it anything outside of basketball that you like to do for fun? You know? Well, you know, really all I do, as you know, JT, is 
game plan, practice plan, watch film, and basketball is my life and always has been. But, you know, the, the one thing I do like to do when I get a free minute is go over to the beach for a day or a weekend and enjoy some good food and, and just relax and enjoy Florida. You know, that's a big part of me moving here and taking this job was to live in a part of the country I enjoyed. Uh, made a lot of friends in the area, so I'll go grab dinner with a buddy or two. But getting to the beach a little bit, trying to get my mind off you knuckleheads once in a while yes, is a good thing, right? Yes, sir. So last question for you. Goals for this season, both individually and as a team, and then tell me where you'd like to be in, say, five years. Uh, goals for this team, you know what I'm saying? I just want to make a jump. Uh, do something special like we never did here at Chipotle before, like win a national championship. But, you know what I'm saying, that's step by step. And I believe we really can achieve that goal. In five years, I really want to, you know what I'm saying, continue my ed get my education, continue bas my basketball career. If not, come back and maybe be playing for, uh, coaching for you. Well, I, I know this. You're going to get your education. You work too hard at it. I know you're going to handle that. If you stay healthy, I think you'll have a chance to play after college at some level. And then when you're done, you got all that money, you want to come back and work for my crazy tail, we'd love to have you. And I think I, I probably speak for all of Chipola Nation when I say that. So yes, we sir. appreciate you and we're proud of you, yes, man. Sir. Thank you, Coach. All right, Chipola Nation, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. We've got a couple big home games coming up down the stretch. We hope you'll get a chance to come out and watch us play. And go Indians.